I knew authorization five years ago. It used to be mostly government of Iraq. And uh -huh. clearly it's changed in the last half decade. Yeah. Um, could you describe those changes? What is RBAC? RBAC stands for Role-Based Access Control. It's basically a way to group permissions so that rather than me having to assign 10 permissions to you and then 10 permissions to me and then 10 permissions to someone else, we group up a bunch of permissions into this thing that we call a role and now I can just assign the one role to you and you get all those 10 things. Okay, so that's like a convenience mechanism and I think it's like perfectly acceptable and usable. It, it stops serving you when you wanna do these more fine-grained authorization things like we were talking about before. The term of the day is REBAC, which stands for Relationship-Based Access Control. And it's one way to think about doing fine-grained access inside of an application. So rather than just saying, you have this role and you have these permissions and I don't have these, this role, so I don't have these permissions, we look at it at an object level and maybe we care about the relationships between objects. So we might say that like, you know, if I'm the owner of a parent folder, then by definition, I should have access to the, the child file or whatever. This is where I think all this stuff starts to break down and I don't think this terminology is actually serving us very much because RBAC and REBAC, which we just discussed, there's, sorry, there's a third one called ABAC, which stands for Attribute-Based Access Control. The reality is these are all just like Russian dolls, <laughs> like nested Russian dolls. ABAC is like a superset. What's an attribute? I mean, anything could be an attribute. A relationship could be an attribute, a role could be an attribute. It's like actually not that productive. Relationships are like slightly more granular, but people really abuse the terms. They'll say like, I have a reader relationship on this or a role relationship on that. And those aren't both relationships, I think. So I actually find this terminology pretty confusing. And I don't think it does a great job of capturing the way that people actually use these concepts because more often than not, people are mixing and matching all these ideas. So we actually wrote a blog post called the 10 types of authorization, which I think more accurately captures what are the different patterns. There's about 10 or 12 patterns that most companies use. They just don't have as like short acronyms as RBAC.